Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com and by Hancock Whitney. Hancock Whitney is here for families, here for businesses, here for communities during this challenging time. Visit HancockWhitney.com slash COVID-19 for the latest. And by Shorten Associates, legal recruiters in Louisiana and Texas. From across Louisiana, we're out to lunch with Peter Raschuti, Stephanie Regal, and Christian Mader. Peter Raschuti is Tulane University's Freeman School of Business Professor of Finance. Stephanie Regal is editor of the Baton Rouge Business Report. Christian Mader is publisher and editor of The Current. It's business Louisiana style. Hi, and welcome to Out to Lunch Louisiana. I'm Peter Raschuti in New Orleans. And I'm Christian Mader in Lafayette. I'm Stephanie Regal in Baton Rouge. As we continue to navigate the fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic, Stephanie, Peter, and I are taking a weekly statewide look at what's happening in the world of business and finance. Back when we first started making Out to Lunch in New Orleans, one of our earliest guests was a young woman named Amy Chenevere. Amy had gone to a football game and realized that all the guys were wearing fan fashion, but there was nothing fashionable for women to wear. So Amy started up a company that made game day apparel for women sports fans. That was back in 2007. During the 2019 football season, a new piece of women's sports apparel started popping up. If you don't have one yourself, you've probably seen someone wearing it. It's a sparkly sequined sports jacket in appropriate Saints, Tiger, or other team colors. That sparkly jacket marked Amy Chinevera's return to sports fashion. And after taking some time away from her business, Amy is back at the head of her company, True Colors Game Day, and she's joining us in just a few minutes on Out to Lunch. On the subject of game day, the New Orleans Saints, the LSU Tigers, and every other successful sports team know how to go out on the field and win. Everybody knows their position. Everybody knows the rules. Everybody on the team knows exactly what to do but they still have a coach. You can't even imagine a football team without a coach. When a big organization depends on communication and on-the-fly decision-making, it makes sense to have someone who can stand back and see the big picture. Which is why businesses have coaches too, like Julie Corette. The company's Julie coaches are an impressive list, includes GE, Marriott, Sheridan, Entergy, Oshner Health System, and many more. Julie, welcome to Out to Lunch. Great to be with all of you, Peter. Julie, it seems that recently the question for a lot of businesses has gone from when will things get back to normal to how do we survive until things go back to normal, if ever. What is the most common question you're being called on to answer right now? Stephanie, I even questioned my own feasibility when COVID first hit, and it wasn't until Saturday of week one of the lockdown that I got a frantic message from one of my clients in Lafayette. What everyone is facing right now is the uncertainty and the need to manage change. And and businesses need certainty to plan. That's the one thing you always hear. So how do you advise a company CEO or, you know, business leadership when nobody knows really what the landscape looks like going out 6, 12, 18 months? So my role is to get everyone in the same room together to facilitate these difficult conversations and to make sure that the managers are communicating with those frontline employees, those direct reports, because even if we don't know the economic landscape, we still need to deal with the today. People showing up to work, what's the morale, where's the water cooler gossip happening, and mitigating that. And so my purpose with most of my clients is ensuring that we have process and structure in place to communicate, even if we don't know what's happening, the fact that, hey, we don't know, but we're working on it. So, Julie, I'm really curious. There's something you just said, right? It's important to get everybody in the room. Clearly, we can't do that. I'm sure we're using Zoom or some sort of, you know, remote conferencing platform. There are, you know, any number of those. But, you know, as somebody who's been part of partially hosting a radio show uh, that way for a while, it can actually be really difficult to re- to direct a conversation that way, like logistically difficult. I mean, I'm curious if you have any tips for people on how to manage a multi-party conversation effectively, uh, especially whenever we're dealing with something so challenging and emotional. 
I love that question, Christian, because Zoom meetings can go wrong very quickly. So if you need to communicate with your teams, there's two ways you wanna go about it. One is you might need to break up folks into smaller groups. Even if that takes more time and you have to do a little duplicative messaging, have a smaller group, ensure that everyone can see you. It's really hard to stay focused if I can't see you speaking, have an agenda and get right to the point. This is not time to talk in circles and to go off and ramble, but tell everybody up front, here's what you can expect from today's meeting and then get right to it. I ask you about the idea that so many of us are working remotely and people are talking about just continuing to work remotely and there's a bunch of pluses to it. What are the negatives and how can you, how can you alleviate that? There are some hesitancies still around working remotely. You have leaders and organizations that are still uncomfortable with it. They believe that if I can't see my employees working, then how can I trust they're working? Not to mention for those of us that are maybe are not used to working from home all of the time, the motivation, the isolation. So what we do to combat the um, concern of is my employee working is to set up touch bases and maybe to have um, daily quick report outs, high level, even, you know, 90 seconds, give me a high level and we're hanging up the phone and then brief little touch bases. And so that way we're on the same page about what do you expect of me? What do, you, what do I expect of you? Then what's the bigger concern are folks that are working too many hours working from home, feeling isolated, disconnected, and lost. With those folks, I'm telling those leaders to send care packages to these people's homes, leave alcohol on their front door and baked goods. You think I'm kidding. This is legit information that I have told CEOs and let your team know that you are grateful for them handwritten thank you notes and then give them permission to stop working and give them tips on what it means to work from home it means you take breaks you get up you walk away and it is absolutely okay to close your laptop and know that you still have work to do because the work isn't going away and give them some structure on how to manage the new work environment julie how how concerned are the the business leaders you're talking to i mean obviously they're trying to hang on themselves but I mean are, are you are you helping them to feel better and I mean really are they to the panic point yet or do you find them adjusting to this new normal Stephanie the answer really runs the gamut so I have some clients that are blowing and going and the work that we're doing is not even related to COVID that we are developing executive level leadership and we're just moving forward then you have some leaders that are really stressed out and having to constantly navigate bringing folks home, sending them back, sending them back to the office, social distancing at the office. Um, at the end of the day, people don't call me because things are going well. They call me because we have a critical issue and they didn't have the internal resources to get it done themselves. So folks are feeling a sense of urgency. Those that are really affected, um, they are very stressed out. There's no doubt about it that we have got a lot of very um, poorly rested leaders in our region that don't know what next week holds for us, but we are, I'm so proud of the leaders in our area that we just continue to show up every day and ready to find a workaround. Like we're really creative business owners in our region. Julie, I, one thing that I'm so kind of looking at, you know, some of the things that you might work with um, management staff on, right? And, it, and if you're dealing with something like, say, like conflict resolution, um, it strikes me that that can be really difficult to do in sort of an unpersonal way when you're dealing with a computer screen. I mean, like there's a degree to which like you and I can connect, we can read each other's facial expressions. But, you know, when you talk to, say, psychiatrists or people who do social work and counseling, like those elements of, of human contact are really important and it's difficult to manage that by video. I mean, how, how, how are you adjusting elements of the hatch strategy with the fact that so many businesses have to manage it this way? And Christian, I will tell you that uh, remote coaching, some of my leaders, the book, I have had some entire engagements happen during the pandemic and I've never even gotten to meet these folks, which is really not the norm unless they're out of state. And while it may seem that video can only go so far, when you are authentic, when you are sincere and you are focused on that conversation and you're not checking your email, 
you truly can connect almost in the same close way that you would if you were face to face. And you know, when you have a business leader uh, and particularly a founder, one of the things I've noticed is uh, they have trouble letting go or delegating as the company gets bigger. How do you how do you deal with that? I mean, I guess you have to get them to trust others, right? It's bigger than that, Peter. When I have someone that is, and most of my um, clients are business owners and founders. So they are small to medium sized businesses that work with me. And the reason they call me, remember, is because there's some sort of sense of urgency. And I always start with the pain point. What is that cost here? What are we losing if we're not letting someone else do this? You tell me what's going to happen if we don't get someone else trained up. You tell me what's going to happen if we don't have a succession plan to replace your number two. Help me understand how bad it would be. Because if it's not that bad, then what are we doing? Oh, it is that bad. So it's, I don't have to tell them. They have to come up with it themselves. And then I help them get there. Julie, how is your business going and how are you marketing yourself, you know, given the flurry of right emails that everybody gets now and, and the fact that you're not able to go out and network and attend the kind of events where you usually presumably were making a lot of contacts, right? Uh, word on the event situation, uh, that, <laughs> that whole book of business uh, is, is gone. Although I'm getting booked for October in-person um, convention speaking. So we'll see what happens this fall. Um, what I have done is continue to put out video content that gives answers to people. So my marketing strategy has always been give the people what they want. And if they can take my videos and they can solve the problems by applying what I've told them on their own, then great. And if not, then they know they can call me because my belief has always to been give them what they need to know, tell them what they need to know. And if they can apply those tools, then that's wonderful because ultimately the goal is to alleviate the drama in the workplace, whether they can do that from watching a video or not. So I continue to rely on social media, but I'm very, I just thank my lucky stars every day, Stephanie, that all the work I've been doing the last nine years, it's like, oh my gosh, it's paying off because nobody's seeing me and I'm still getting calls. So I'm very grateful as a single mother of two that my business is still thriving and I'm, I'm busy every hour, every day. So, I, you know, you mentioned earlier that, that um, when businesses call you, maybe things aren't going so well. And, and I got to imagine that right now, um, that may be happening more. I mean, like to an extent that like, if you, you, you see a crisis and that has cascading effects on our lives, I mean, if there's underlying interpersonal stress that can cause problems at the workplace, I mean, I don't want to be crass about it, but it seems like this would be pretty good time for you actually. I know Christian, um, you would, <laughs> I absolutely um, don't capitalize on bad situations but it is true that people only call a coach when they've hit a wall, okay? You only hire a trainer when you can't do it for yourself anymore. And what I found is that while folks have COVID going on in the background, I am still, for the majority, getting a lot of standard conflict-based issues of, hey, I've got these departments, no one's talking to each other, or we haven't had a strategic plan in five years and we have no idea what to do in the next six, 18, 24 months, or I've got this executive on my team and he's not acting like a leader. We've got to really pull him together or we have to redistribute his job duties. So folks are starting to settle in to this world and whatever COVID related issues are happening are becoming part of the workplace challenges we navigate on a daily basis. Wow. It's striking to think that we're settling into this. Um, Julie Corette is an executive coach and keynote speaker. Julie, thank you so much for joining us and Out to Lunch. Thank y'all very much. You're listening to Out to Lunch Louisiana with Christian Mader in Lafayette, Stephanie Regal in Baton Rouge, and I'm Peter Raschuti in New Orleans. A few weeks ago here on Out to Lunch, our guest was Ed Lang, the CFO of the New Orleans Saints and the Pelicans. Ed was 100% confident that somehow, some way, the NFL would figure out a way to host live football games with spectators in 2020. 
That must have come as some reassurance to our next guest, Amy Chenevere. Amy is the owner and founder of True Colors Game Day. The company makes fashion items specifically for women to wear and to take to the game on game day. Amy, welcome to Out to Lunch. Thanks so much for having me. Amy, your your business seems to be centered on a very particular women's game day accessory, the, the clear bag. So, um, you know, some... Uh, some years ago, uh, for security reasons, the NFL decreed that the only way you can bring a bag to a game is it is if it's totally see-through. And, and I would think that your your biggest market, right, would be the game day experience. Of course, it's totally unclear if NFL stadiums will have fans in them this upcoming season. So how is that changing how you're going to bring this to market? Well, you know, that element that Julie was touching on earlier, the element of uncertainty is, you know, certainly um, – an obstacle right now as I'm going out, you know, in my wholesale strategy, um, reaching out to all of my uh, wholesale accounts. Um, one thing that won't change in terms of the clear bag policy, uh, designing the clear bags and moving forward is that you're always going to be a fan. The sequin jacket, um, I have come up with a brand new style and I'm coining it as the LSU commemorative edition limited, um, limited series jacket. And so, you know, if we, you know, we're hopeful to move forward with these football uh, season for the NFL and college this upcoming year. Um, however, if we don't and we're all having parties at each other's living rooms and backyards and having, you know, cookouts, then we're still fans. The fanship won't go anywhere. And I think it, if, 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 by God, if, if it doesn't come back, you know, for this upcoming season, it'll even be stronger in the next season. And then I think that the pride and the spirit of the fans, which is what I've built my business around in the first place, is all that energy and pride and, and spirit of all the fans, whether you're Saints, LSU, UL, Louisiana Tech. Um, I mean, it's still there. And, um, and I think it'll even become stronger in the future. But right now, the uncertainty that Julie was touching on is that all of my wholesalers are really, um, you know, the uncertain the uncertainty is there and they don't know how much to buy, if to buy, what to buy, how deep they want to go into my product line. And, you know, I am considered a novelty brand. I'm not a bread and butter, you know, account for any store. I'm a seasonal business. However, when that season opens, it's full throttle and then it closes and it's over, you know? And so it's really important for me to be on time and hit the market just right with the right product at the right price point. So you're you're talking about your wholesalers. I feel like I I, I need to yeah. get a better sense of how your business actually actually works. I mean, so you, who are your wholesalers? What, what, what how does that supply chain work for you? Well, mostly I'm trying to sell you know via social media. That's worked best for me: Instagram, Facebook, and my website. Um, however, I do have choice um, wholesale accounts that I sell to here in Louisiana. So I mostly rely on uh, websites and Instagram. So, Amy, given the uncertainty and the fluidity, I mean, what are you telling your manufacturers? Are you just totally on hold right now? Yeah. So that's why um, I am trying to hit up um, as many of my wholesalers as possible right now so I can get those bulk orders. I certainly have minimums to meet on every single color combination. So, I mean, I might have requests for Louisiana Tech or for the Houston Texans, but I need to make sure that I can sell more than 200 of the jackets because I don't want to sit on them, you know? So I'm trying to be smart in my decisions. And I know that um, I could stay strong, you know, in, in going down the angles of uh, New Orleans Saints and LSU, LSU specifically, because we're coming off of that national championship and everybody's still high on life for that. And um, so that's really kind of where I'm focusing my attention and not so much on other teams and outlying areas. Now, Amy, this has been uh, true all along for you is you do, talk about being tied to oh, the fans of a certain uh, team, but you don't have those logos uh, and all the complications right. that, that involves. Correct. That was the very first component of my business that I knew that um, I wanted to maintain is just for it simply to be the hard to find team color combinations and fashion forward trend right silhouette and so when i shifted out of the tops and dresses and into the clear bag spirit straps and privacy pouches and now the sequin jackets it just doesn't come into play and i, I really honestly never wanted to go down that avenue in the first place i wanted to offer something that was different and unique that what you could buy from a fan shop or a bookstore or something like that i want it to be more fun fashionable and chic and with um, my clear bags you know, those are completely custom design. I have a little um, gold bit that's um, on each of the bags and uh, my tags and all that. It's 
everything is custom engraved like with my font and everything so I just wanted to make it like an elevated look for fun fashionable chic cool girls to wear to the game you know and it's even more fun with the sequin jackets because all the girls just want to tribe up and everybody wears them all at the same time and you know and it's just make a big make a big splash you know and show show everybody your spirit and pride. And really, it's all in the name of fun. You know, with the clear bags, I really, really wanted to make following the rules more fun. I can't tell you how many times I've heard stories about people going into an arena and having to dash, you know, stash their, you know, their nice handbag in a bush somewhere, hoping that they could recover it after the game, or thinking that they have to go all the way back to the car to put their bag up. And I'm like, you know what, just follow, do it my way. And then you can still have fun with it, put on your spirit strap. And then, um, and it's just, it just makes it a little bit more fun to follow the rules. Amy, it's Julie Corette. I've been following you on Instagram for a while now. You are absolutely targeting your audience the best way possible. When you said cool girls going to the game, looking chic, I'm like, that's me, sign me up. And I tag my friends from other schools. So not even from LSU, I tag other friends, I won't name names, to say you've got to follow this account. This is These are great looks. And, Girl, you're doing awesome. You. If you want to talk business strategy on the side, just hit me. Oh, up. absolutely. You know, I'm always, um, one thing about me is that I, I make it my mission in life to always continue to learn and learn more about my market and um, just just to fill myself with as much knowledge as possible. I've always believed that knowledge is power. And the more, you know, relatable you are to your fans and to, um, to your audience, your true target audience, you know, the better off we can all be. Because I certainly just want to do things that excite people make people happy and make people you know um you know everybody that whole thread of uncertainty goes through every decision that we make every day in our lives whether in business or personal you know and so spending that extra 78 dollars or 68 dollars on a clear bag i want it to be a purchase that people feel really good about you know um one of my taglines um within my brand is unite with true colors game day and so you know amidst our you know kind of nature, um, some would say, you know, divisiveness or whatever. I want to really unite people and uh, within football and sports, you know, whether it be basketball or anything, you know, I want to unite everyone, you know, and that's a way that we can all come together and put smiles on our faces and be excited and positive. Amy, I'm really curious about, I mean, I would think that what you sell is could be kind of a bellwether for, for maybe even how people are feeling out there. And, and, and you kind of have an interesting demographic breakup, right? By the fact that like you got different customer team fan bases all over the country that might be looking at the pandemic differently. So, so I mean, I'm wondering, I, I got, you know, whether you're finding that, I, I don't know that, you know, certain, like maybe schools in the SEC are more likely to be buying up buying up bags because you know they're 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 rosier on the idea that things are going to come around i mean are you noticing any trends among who's buying the south um i would consider us the most spirited fan base if you will you know i mean i'm not so familiar with um fans in the north or the northeast or west but um I feel like, you know, what I design really taps into the Louisiana market. You know, we're zingy, fun, exciting, peppy people, you know, all around. And um, I just feel like the energy will always be there and will never go away. And we love excuses to kick our heels up and, you know, show, you know, people our culture here of Louisiana. And um, and that can span from Lafayette to New Orleans to Slaudel to, you know, uh, Lafayette and, you know, even, you know, we can loop in Alexandria and, you know, all the towns in between, of course, Shreveport, et cetera. But I mean, Louisiana really is like the zing of my business. And um, I like to focus on Louisiana because it just, it's like, that's how I created the whole idea is in the Superdome at a Saints game. I'll never forget that feeling, you know, that it's just un, un, unbelievable to describe that to other people that live outside of Louisiana. You just know that feeling and it's just there. And so I wanted to take that forward and build a product line really around it. Amy, the good thing, of course, is that those sequin jackets, you, you can't lose your date, which is a, which is a good, good idea. Right. They, <laughs> and I have to ask, you paused your business and then you went off to Texas and worked full time. Yeah, um, I did. That's an unusual uh, strategy. I mean, you didn't sell the business. Well, and uh, how did you pull that no, off? No, no. 
okay, so here's what happened. Okay, so I um, I started with tops and dresses. I got up to 17 different team color combinations in these dresses. And if you can imagine the inventory management, inventory control, I was living in New Orleans. My factory was in Dallas. And things just got a little overwhelming. And I was still almost a one-man show. I had uh, brand ambassadors at different universities um, in the South. And um, I just, there was just, I had a little life change and, um, I just wanted to refocus and recenter um, what I was doing and uh, refocus on my true values and the, my core belief in what the brand was about. And I just actually got spread too thin. I um, mean, I was selling up to, you know, the Carolinas and Tennessee and Colorado and, you know, places like that. And I really, I really do feel like it's more of a regional product. And um, so anyhow, I just wanted to take a break and reset and, and, you know, I believe in God's plan in my life and whatnot. And an opportunity came about in Houston. Um, and it was with um, a small startup business. And I felt that, you know, it was presented to me for a reason. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to make this change. I'm going to go with this job. I'm going to move to Houston. I'm going to see what happens. And um, that opportunity was wonderful. I learned a lot. My boss is still my mentor. I adore her. She's actually from New Orleans. And um Anyway, her business took a turn, so therefore I decided um, that I had to take a turn. And anyway, I was let go, and uh, the clear bag policy came into place, and I just quickly, you know, jumped on board with that because I was like, okay, this is shooting me right back into my business. And so I never wanted to let go of the brand because I believed so much in exactly what I was doing. However, you never can see into the future, so I was just morphing into what uh, what the opportunities were at that time. So I just jumped right back into my business and created the clear bags for the clear bag policy. And so that's what launched me back in. And then the sequin jackets, oh my gosh, I came up with that idea last year. I was in New Orleans for a bachelorette party and, um, and we found these sequin jackets and they were like in black and like teal and purple, like just like mermaid colors. And I was like, oh my gosh, these would be so much fun to do in team colors. And so I, uh, I asked my factory if they could do it because they, uh, they produce um, assorted goods. And she said, yes. And I couldn't believe it. And um, I mean, this opportunity that I had right before me, I didn't know if people were going to think I was crazy by putting these jackets out. I mean, are people going to respond positively to this or not? And so I was like, oh, I'm going to give it a go because I really believe in it. And so I started with the purple and gold for LSU. And then I quickly, re you know, uh, added the black and gold for the Saints. And, um, and I was actually designing a Mardi Gras, a custom Mardi Gras fabric uh, for Mardi Gras. And then uh, due to COVID, my factory had to close down. And then, of course, COVID hit on our side and said the week are closed down. So the Mardi Gras jacket never happened, but I assure you it'll be coming <laughs> yeah. up. Well, let's hope. Um, any supply chain issues you no, know, with the pandemic? No. Or, I mean, is your factory? No, not at all. Uh, shipping has um, increased um, and uh, been delayed. However, we kind of moved through that uh, that problem. Um, shipping is relatively expensive, I would say, but we try to be smart and ship everything bulk. And um, and I do DHL Express, so I don't have to worry about containers on a ship, waiting for them to come in and clearing customs and all that. So it's been pretty seamless, you know, get, you know, considering all of the issues that could present itself out there. Amy Chenevar is the owner and founder of True Colors Game Day. Amy, thank you so much for joining us on Out to Lunch Louisiana. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Out to Lunch Louisiana. We edited these conversations to fit into the time slot here on your NPR station. You can hear longer versions of these conversations wherever you normally get your Out to Lunch podcast. If you're not an Out to Lunch podcast subscriber, search for Out to Lunch, Out to Lunch Baton Rouge, or Out to Lunch Acadiana on your podcast app. Now, at some point soon, we're going to go back to hosting Out to Lunch around the lunch table. For right now, Commander's Palace in New Orleans is closed, but you can have a range of ready-to-cook items shipped from Commander's Kitchen to yours anywhere nationwide. Information is at goldbelly.com. Our Lafayette Out to Lunch restaurant, the French Press, is open at 50% capacity, and you can get delivery through Waiter or Grubhub. In Baton Rouge, Mansers on the Boulevard is open. They have 50% occupancy, and you can get pickup. Out to Lunch is a production of INO Broadcasting. The producer of our show is Grant Morris. Our technical director is Eric Merle. And photos from this show on our website and social media are taken by Jill LaFleur. I'm Peter Raschuti in New Orleans. 
I'm Christian Mader in Lafayette. And I'm Stephanie Regal in Baton Rouge. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you back here next week for more Out to Lunch, Louisiana. Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com and by Hancock Whitney. Hancock Whitney is here for families, here for businesses, here for communities during this challenging time. Visit HancockWhitney.com slash COVID-19 for the latest. And by... Shorten Associates, legal recruiters in Louisiana and Texas. Mitchell Foreman wrote and performs all the music on Out to Lunch. You can hear Mitchell's music anywhere great jazz is sold or streamed and at MitchellForeman.com. 